Chris Green, Chief Editor, Tech Africa News. I'm here today at Mobile World Congress 2023 in Barcelona. I'm joined by Magnus Pedersen, who's the VP of Sales EMEA for Nordic Semiconductor. Magnus, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Good. Look forward to having this conversation with you. We're glad to see you at Mobile World Congress 2023. What are you showcasing this year and how has the show been so far for you? Yeah, no, we are showcasing uh, a lot of new stuff actually. It's been a few years since we were here the last time. Um, the show last year was sort of half full and uh, a lot of the Asian guys were still not here. I think now we are back full throttle, you know, and we are showing the latest developments in, uh, in the short range products that we have, in mainly Bluetooth, Bluetooth LE and also in the cellular domain, NBIoT, LTE M1. And we also just recently, a few days ago, actually launched our new Wi-Fi chip as well. So we are covering the major standards now in terms of the wireless, and we are showing off customer products and demos on, uh, based on those technologies. Okay, so based upon what you've seen so far, would you say that the show is back to the level it was in the, in the sort of, say, 2019, or not quite just yet? I think it's not quite just yet. Uh, the numbers I have seen is probably expecting 70,000 visitors this year, while 2019 peaked at 109,000 or something like this. But the feeling we have as a company is that it is more busy than ever. Probably because in the earlier days we were more limited in terms of the technology offering, right? So we had Bluetooth LE as the focus area, we were really new in cellular, uh, but now we have all the, the three major brands, you know, and then uh, a lot more activity, I think, on, on our booth, regardless if there is probably less number of people visiting in total. So that's the feeling I have. We are, we are back uh, full throttle. Yeah, I, I think so as well. And I think having walked past your, your stand several times, yeah. you've always been busy. There's always been people here. Yeah. And so it's, it's obviously nice to see that's actually happening as well. Yes, it is. Can you tell us more about Nordic Semiconductor's involvement in the cellular IoT space? Yeah, so there's actually a lot of things going on. Um, on the hardware side, we still are, let's say, offering a component at module level. So it's a dual uh, core microprocessor, first of all, from ARM. Uh, we have a long relationship with ARM. Uh, we can offer communication on LTE, uh, on NB-IoT. We can also do positioning services based on the GPS that's on board as well. Um, the chipset uh, is also combined with, uh, with Wi-Fi now for, for Wi-Fi positioning. You can do cell phone uh, positioning over single cell or, or multi-cell. So it's a lot of uh, new things that you can do with this, uh, this technology. Even though probably the hardware hasn't developed anything new in the last couple of years, uh, we are offering services to improve positioning like assisted GPS, uh, predictive GPS, as mentioned, single cell, multi-cell, and, and Wi-Fi positioning. So a lot of new things uh, on the application side and system side. Uh, we are also demoing for the first time uh, ever on this platform a solution on DECT NR+. So that's the private network's uh, version of uh, or the usage of these technology, right? So that's really something new. And um, we have also recently announced that we have implementations now that we are showing where the physical SIM card is no longer needed. You can go a soft SIM version and longer term you will be uh, using an integrated SIM as well in the next generation platform. So a lot of new stuff is happening around the same technology, you know, in terms of low power sensors or low power trackers and, and, and everything that goes on in that domain. It's just, just very vibrant these days, a lot of stuff. Which is good. So it, it seems that you're, you're able to develop a lot of new software on the hardware that you already have in place. Yes. And that's also new for us. Uh, so we have, over the years, never charged anything for any of our software solutions. It has been enablers to sell the hardware. While we now see it a bit differently, yes, there are a lot of things that are the enablers, but there are also now additional services that the customer is actually willing to pay for. So it could be in the pro provisioning, it could be the, the device management, it could be the positioning services that I mentioned, it, and it could be all the services as well that's, that's coming in our, in our roadmaps that we will probably show this time next year, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's true, yes. So can you provide any sort of success stories that you, you've had with Nordic Semiconductor Solutions and the impact they have on your customers? Yeah, I think there are, there are let's say, general speaking. I think uh, COVID in many ways brought us more business. Mm. Uh, so we are tracking and tracing uh, vaccines. We are tracking and tracing people. 
uh, there are, I would say, sensor systems either for improving agriculture, it could be air quality monitoring, it could be the educational programs. I, I'm particularly proud of the engagement that we have with the Microbit Foundation and everything that goes on with learning the kids you know, to program on these simple machines and it's a lot of focus on the third world and the uneducated pieces of or part of the world, you know, uh, where kids at a very early stage get access to the tools, get access to the kids and start to figure out how is this programming, how can I program things to do different things and I think that's, uh, that's just amazing to see what kids can do yeah. when they get access to these kind of things, right? Yeah, and that's, that's particularly relevant to, to Africa, of course, where, where yes, you've got a lot of development is. and a lot of new technology that's happening to do exactly what you yes. sort of turned around and said there. So do you see that as, you mentioned about the sort of third world, is that a, a focus specific? Well, specific focus I wouldn't say it's a focus area for us. Uh, I guess as, a, as the customer base and as a segment, we, we do a lot in the medical domain, we do a lot in, in the, in the um, industrial domain. But I think for me personally and privately, I like to see these initiatives as well, you know, yeah. where you use the technology and use the technology to, to make the, the, the world a better place to be. And this, I mean, the microbit itself, it, it started in the UK like a decade ago as a program by the BBC, you know, they, they made a million of these boards and they, they started with the, with the education of the, the young students and kids in, in the UK. And now it's a worldwide thing with millions and millions of devices, you know, a lot of kids are getting access to this. So, so for me, I like this, uh, this more on a private and personal level. I feel okay. proud by these engagements, yeah, right? Good. So sort of finally, what would you say your vision is for the future of connectivity and how does it really plan to continue innovating and driving the industry forward in this area? Yeah, uh, I mean, we as a company, uh, we are really growing and we are really growing fast. Uh, so we are public listed, so that means some of our goals for the future are also known to the investors. Um, we ended last year a bit shy of $800 million in revenue. We have a clear goal of a billion dollars next year. Uh, we have also announced that we will do $2 billion in 2026. You know, so these are ambitious goals. That means we keep on developing the products, we keep on integrating on the products, and we keep on taking them to the next level in terms of integration, power consumption and also the, the different standards and, uh, and the application areas that we are supporting. So for now you see probably still bits and pieces, yes you have the Bluetooth, yes you have the cellular, yes you have the Wi-Fi, but the integration level of this will in the future be, let's say, even better and more integrated. And then of course we, we will continue to build on our platform on the software offerings as well. So uh, I hope to get the chance to see you here this time next year, you know, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you what we did. Uh, let's I was, see I was thinking exactly, <laughs> exactly the same thing. We can catch up next year yeah. and see how you're, you're going towards that target. Exactly, so, yeah. no, that would be awesome. Magnus, thank you very much for that. It's been a pleasure talking Thanks to for you. Me. I'm Chris pleasure Green time. for Tech Africa News here at Mobile World Congress 2023. You can find further information, video interviews on our website, techafricanews.com.